All right, topic number two. Bryce Mitchell did an interview. He, uh, by the way, he's fighting at UFC 272. So that's interesting. Taking on uh, Edson Barboza. Hell of a time for that. Dude, if you didn't know who Bryce Mitchell was... You do now. You, he, this was full frontal, Luke. This, this was... Uh, yeah. This was like, let me just streak across the 50-yard line naked, right? Pretty much. Bryce Mitchell did an interview with Ariel Hawani on his show, The MMA Hour. And on this, he had... Uh, how would you describe this? Bryce Mitchell basically has nothing, nothing but a, his entire worldview is a series of intertwining conspiracies, right? Well, the thing is. Something like that? Even if he's quotes. right on some of them, even if there are things that he said, well, I'm gonna have to go back and look because the, the abrasive ones were just so, you know, aggressive, but um, maybe there's even things you agree with, but he's all freaking in, Luke. I mean, he's ready to, to pick up the rifle in, um, and, you know, start the next civil war, you know what I mean? Yeah, on uh, on being, he said he would rather die than give up his guns. Quote, my number one explanation is that the government is in a lot of these, talking about school shootings. They have an agenda. They set up mass shootings and then blame the AR-15s. They say, oh, now we're going to come take your AR-15s now. Let me tell you why they haven't taken away the AR-15s, because this is God's land. They cannot. Well, then why would they try if they cannot? But okay. They do not have the power to take away these AR-15s. Court. But if they don't have the power to take the AR-15s, then why are they trying? But okay. They have been trying and trying and trying. The people are too strong. Oh, I see. They just can't, but they really want to. I would die before I hand these guns over to my government. I would like to know who is trying to confiscate his AR-15. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So even if there's things you lean in the direction of, of the basis of some of the things he's saying, he's going like so aggressive Civil War stuff, Luke. And I'm not saying I'm naive to not understand that that's a you know prevailing thought in certain circles anyway, but like, damn, that's aggressive in this moment, Luke. So do you think there's any... Sean Strickland in him. <clears throat> and by asking you that, I'm not asking, do you think, you know, there's two guys that we should have on the watch list. I mean, is some of this, is, okay, this is who I am to a certain degree, but people are gonna really know me now if I can amp up this character and do a little Colby Covington, do a little, you know what I mean? Oh, I see. Do a like little, because you know, there, like there are has... a lot of people that say, Sean Strickland's not crazy, he's just smarter than you, and he built this character and you're falling for yeah, it. Yeah, probably. I'm like, they're... that character's pretty well done then. I, I, would I, say, I would say this, I mean, my best read on this and I, none of us know Bryce Mitchell, so we have no idea who he actually is. But my read on this is that um, probably a little bit, you know, you get emboldened when you go on an interview show to really kind of like state your views as clearly and forthrightly as you can. I mean, I did bring that spirit to the MMA Hour, episode 200, when I made my debut and it sparked something between us, Luke. I came in there with like, what do you MMA mean? beat, you mean? Yeah, what, what did I call it? MMA a, Hour. The Ariel Show, whatever you want to call it. You know, I came there like, with a January 6th attitude. Can we, can we like put any effort into this discussion or can we just derail it? I just want you to know that. We should put some effort into this discussion. The point I was trying to raise was, I just feel like, dude, even before the ultimate fighter, the, the MMA community has always been two places. One, a place for self-identifying misfits, outcasts, people who don't fit in for whatever reason that may be in whatever community. And two, it's just always been very online. Always been online. If you were a fan, <clears throat> round tough, free tough, you wanted pride stuff, you had to go and get bit torrents and you had to be on the underground and that's who was talking there. Joe Rogan, for a time, back in the aughts, he used to comment freely in the threads in mixedmartialarts.com or at and the time it was MMA.tv. You have to agree that even compared to major team sports, UFC was ahead of the game at like forcing every athlete to have a Twitter account and sure. to like really sure. and really push them in areas to, to use it. And so, I think that's always obviously been a, a So, so what, I, what I would say is in this day and age when we're asked for our views and you're doing it in a public way and then you have a person who is young, very online, on social media, probably doesn't have views anyway that are in necessarily even in lockstep with the wider state he's in to some degree, then you're going to get these kinds of you know, uh, moments where people espouse views that are impossible to otherwise justify. What I would say though is, I gotta tell you, people were like, this, this is, this is a shock to my conscience. <laughs> I can't believe that someone in the community would hold views <laughs> such as these. I'm like, do you, are you motherfuckers on Twitter for five seconds? <laughs> my mentions every day are, yeah. you know, uh, fuck it, Obama drinks the blood of young babies and uh, COVID is a lie. It's just the flu with a skirt on or whatever the fuck they say. I don't even know what they say anymore. But like my, in, my, my mentions and what I, not even that, like just what I see on different places is filled to the brim with these very online radicalized views. Like, I would argue 
Bryce Mitchell's views on this are far closer to what the average person in this community believes than mine. I guarantee that. Wow, that's, <clears throat> okay, that's aggressive, but you might actually be right. Dude, I'm yeah. 100%, dude, go back and who did we talk to? Nice people at the MMA Awards. Do you think <laughs> yeah, well, that they that agree was... more with Bryce Mitchell or me? Oh, God. That they was, probably uh... agree more with him. That was zombie prom, and there was times that it got a little too heavy, and I had to go outside. <laughs> but um, it was it was a trip, you know. It was it was. Good thing we had those space rocks we were eating. Yeah. Um, I mean, they had they had mini sliders. They had like five thousand mini sliders, but they were like ice cold. I know the thing was it was like we're gonna give you these sliders, but we're gonna because we're, we're like we're oh gonna, they only gonna... have one food option. I know. I was asking them why were you spraying the food with liquid nitrogen. It's just gonna make it freezing cold, but they said that's what they do. I mean, they, I mean, they had like 400 sliders, which is like, okay. I mean, it's a <laughs> heavy with a collective temperature of zero. But I'm like, okay. Matter then, wasn't actually moving. Yeah. BC, your response to the Bryce Mitchell interview does it say anything that we should pay attention to? Being that we, you know, we're not naive, it's it's not that big of a deal, but it's it's radical because we don't see it in this. Oh, I see it in this form, in this channel, in this proper show, whatever. I mean, I know it's Ariel with a guy in Zoom, but you get what my point. Yeah, yeah. In, in the, we, we haven't seen it, a lot of that through that. So um, it is, it's, again, like even separating from the politics, it's just aggressive as shit, Luke. It's, it's really, you know, close to the, uh, to the scary level, so. Uh, that's a very profound take, BC. I'm glad. I mean, I know, I know, I, I dug deep for that one, but that's really the heart of it, Luke. Yeah, I just, um, I don't think there's anything like, oh, that guy should shut up. I mean, like, do say what you. Let want. Let me say this you though. Let me, yeah, well, Ariel was, Ariel was, he, he, there's a no-win scenario there because it, you're supposed to, let, to some extent, you want your guests to be able to say what they want. At the same time, they can't just say anything without it being challenged. So he's trying to thread this needle. At the same time, BC, I have to tell you, like, it's moments like that where I'm like what exactly is the role of MMA media? I'll tell you exactly why I said that. Because yeah. you have this Phil Mickelson thing going on where he wanted to take golf money from the Saudis and build up golf in Saudi Arabia. And what were the splits on that? Huh? <laughs> what were the splits of what he was going to take home and then let Significant the, yeah. money. But the point being, it all blew up because people got mad about it. In, in MMA and in, in boxing too, like they'll put fights on in Saudi Arabia, and dude, they could probably execute someone as the opening act, <laughs> and no one in combat sports is going to care. It's like for our opening act before the rematch between X and Y, we're just having honor killing. You're dude, like, this is Anthony not Joshua entertainment. Eighty-five million. They paid him eighty-five million to just show. Like that show was up, like right? like. So this is my point, and no one gives a shit about it. Granted, this is <clears> this is um this is uh you know a different world. So the point I'm trying to make here is. Um, I don't even understand when you see views like this, what you're supposed to say about them as a media member, other than, yeah, it looks a lot like what I see on social media. It, it mirrors it quite closely. Seriously. I, I don't, they, yeah, don't want, yeah. they don't want us to police them, and I don't think we could even if we tried. So I don't really know what we're supposed to do in terms of getting mad about it. What are you supposed to get mad about? No, you're about? not supposed to get mad about it. I mean, look, you want, if you, you want free speech or you don't. Right. You know, like, say whatever the hell. You, if you believe it, say it. But we're also can take the liberty of saying, oh, wow, you're a scary motherfucker. Like, I'm staying far away from you or whatever you want to say in return. But, yeah, having the platform to say it is more important than whether you agree or are willing to go down that road with him. But, Luke, if, if, the, shit, one thing. if the shit does happen, does go down, I, he's going to Klitschko that shit, okay? Yeah, listen. He's going to be like, yo, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 my career is over. I'm now, I'm... I'm going to start twistering <laughs> some Antifa. Yeah. yeah. He, has a, he has a twister on his account. He really does. Uh, by the way, he apparently says... The 2020 presiden presidential election was rigged. It's like, dude, I don't even understand how someone could even begin to believe that. But okay. Inflation is a form of control by the government. That's interesting. Ivermectin works much better against COVID than vaccines, uh, but the vaccines make more money. Well, that's actually true, which is why they're being... Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't feel the need to pick through every one of this is what This is just what our, produ this is what our producer wrote. The 2017 <laughs> Las Vegas shooting was an inside job, he said. No such thing as a gun problem, just a mental health problem. And then lastly, he's actually half right about this. But that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of half rights. There's a lot of half rights. Yeah, uh, Health care is not a right because you don't have a right to someone else's service. That's actually partly true, but not and, fully. And obviously, dude, you want an open forum when the truth needs to be shared. I just don't believe a lot of what he says is the truth, and that's that's all right, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, last thing on this: <clears throat> How common do you think his views are among active participants? Okay, like in a, a, a lessened version of that, I think covers eighty-five percent of yeah, the pool. That's right. But that extreme, that extreme mm, probably is rare, or even close to that. But extreme. like, who has sympathies in that direction? I would say the vast majority. The vast majority. 
All right. Oh, you're going to catch some heat from our MK Jan, Jan. We should, before, all jokes aside, where is RJ? If we get that January 6th clothing line up on Morning Combat <laughs> story, I don't care what you think about I'll, the politics. I'll, I'll promote it. Shit it's shit selling. It's sold out again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do that. Corey, have we figured out how to get you on Mike and Cam yet? He's always got an excuse. Yeah, Corey's like, I'm not worried so much about being on <laughs> mic right now or on camera right now. I just have to talk in your motherfucking ear. <laughs> Corey's like, I saw what you guys did to Jay Aaron. That's, that's really what Topic it is. number three, Bellator 275 storylines. Uh, Bellator heads back to, how do you say it? Erie? Erie? Irie? Uh, Ireland. They go back to Ireland. They're going to be at the three arena in Dublin. Those crowds are the shit. They are fucking bananas. Now, they did lose the fight with Peter Queeley. He does come out to Zombie, which is his whole thing, so you may not see that. But in the main event, BC, this is actually, I'm actually going to call this a pretty important fight to pay attention to. And I actually think you might have a new champion on Saturday or whatever it is Friday. Whoa. Hold on. Gigard Musasi, oh, your current dude, you're middleweight just gonna champion. Put, you're just going to take that out and be like, don't look at this. We'll talk okay. about this later, but you know. Taking on Austin Vanderford, who to this point has probably gained more acclaim from his uh, marriage than by his fighting skills. But I got to tell you, that shouldn't be that way because his fighting skills are pretty high. I you could see, also argue he's as well known for that aggressive tattoo than he is for anything the else. The throat tattoo, I mean, yeah. he's, that, he's all in on that, Luke, okay? What I will tell you is, BC, and this is why I feel this way, Musasi, I feel is slowing a little bit. I don't think he's washed, but he's okay. slowing. Hold on, let me, let me get the whole thing out. Let me get the whole thing out. You, That's one. Two, uh, Vanderford can wrestle his ass off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Three, now Vanderford is not Rafael Lovato Jr., but Rafael Lovato Jr. was able to win with, I would call it, wrestling plus dominant grappling positions. It is at least conceivable that Vanderford can borrow the Lovato Jr. playbook against Musasi. 